All right. So uh, a couple of things here that we get into speed and velocity. He's using both vocabulary and the plug and chug. So this is the chapter three plug and chug. Now in problem 32, he does mention velocity. Properly, he should use speed here because when he talks, he goes from rest to 10 meters per second. He does not give a direction and therefore that is a speed. Uh, there's another underlying assumption for all these problems. The underlying assumption is that the acceleration, if there is acceleration, is constant. If the acceleration is not constant, then we start getting into calculus-based problems, which is beyond, well beyond the scope of this course. The other thing is that there was a typo in some editions. I think the earlier editions of the chapter of the 12th edition. The first equation in the plug and chug is speed. My version says speed plus distance over time. It should be speed equals distance over time. Some books have it corrected, and presumably the error is going to become more and more outdated unless you've got have a used book. Uh, you might see the error there. But it should be speed equals distance over time. And one other thing is that the second equation he writes, average speed equals total distance cover over time interval. That is actually a better wording of the equation than speed equals distance over time. Now, the big emphasis here is average speed is what we're talking about. So average speed is distance over time. Because if I went from here to Charlotte and back, I'm not traveling the same speed the entire time. And so speed equals distance over time doesn't make any sense with that wording. It really is, I can find an average speed. So problem 30, calculate your average walking speed when you step one meter in 0.5 seconds. Well, notice at that point, he's already talking about average speed there. So he's using the equation to blow. But the distance traveled is a meter. The time is a half second. And so it's one meter divided by a half second. The math is one divided by 0.5, which is two. And the units, meters over seconds, which is meters per second. 31, show the acceleration of the car that can go from rest to 100 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds is 10 kilometers per hour second. As long as the units at the end are kind of odd, you don't generally see acceleration in kilometers per hour second, but it is legitimate units for acceleration. You have a unit of distance over two units of time. Oftentimes, the units of time is like seconds squared, and so that's seconds times seconds. But as long as you've got the two units of time on the bottom, unit of distance on top, you're good to go. Now, I can come up with some really strange, bizarre ways of expressing the exact same thing, but under ordinary circumstances, that's about it. So acceleration is change in, well, change in velocity over time, change in time, or change in speed over change in time. In this problem, he doesn't give direction at all. We have to assume that he's talking about the scalar. And so therefore, we're talking about excel the scalar acceleration, change in speed over change in time. Change is always final minus initial. And so we, my final is 10 kilometers per hour. My initial is zero. That's what at rest means. So 10, 100 kilometers per hour divided by, uh, wow, 100 kilometers per hour minus zero kilometers per hour is 100 kilometers per hour. So that is the change in, that's the change in speed. And, or, yeah, that's the change in speed. And the time is uh, 10 seconds. So it's 100 kilometers per hour over 10 seconds. The math is 100 divided by 10, which is 10. And then the units is kilometers per hour over seconds. That's kilometers per hour seconds. 32, show the acceleration of a hamster is 5 meters per second squared when it increases its velocity from rest to 10 meters per second in 2 seconds. And so he has velocity here. It should be speed. But show the acceleration of the hamster is 5 meters per second squared. Well, again, acceleration, change in speed over change in time. Scalar acceleration, change in speed over change in time. Vector acceleration, change in velocity over change in time. So we do have a change in speed, 10 meters per second minus 0 meters per second is the change in speed, that's so 10 minus 0 is 10, 10 meters per second over 2 seconds. The math is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. And the units, meters per second over seconds, is a meter per second squared, or meter per second second. Uh, 33, should the hamster in the preceding problem travels a distance of 22.5 meters in 3 seconds. We have to assume that the hamster is still accelerating at the same rate, still accelerating at 5 meters per second squared. And so that means, so his speed is changing 5 meters per second every second. So he starts at 0. After one second, he's now going 5 meters per second. 
two seconds, he's going 10 meters per second, and three seconds, he's going 15, whatever hand gesture I need to make for that. So he's going from zero to 15 meters per second in the three seconds. In problem 32 it only happened, worked over two seconds, 33, three seconds. So it's going from zero to 15 meters per second. If acceleration is constant, and we have to assume that, otherwise it's a calculus problem. If the acceleration is constant, <clears throat> then his average speed is, well, average zero and 15. Zero plus 15 is 15, divided by two is 7.5. So he's traveling an average of 7.5 meters per second for three seconds. And so the distance, 7.5 meters per second times three seconds, the math is 7.5 times 3, which is 22.5. And the, and the units, meters per second times seconds. The seconds cancel out. I'm left with meters. And so I get 22.5 meters. And that is that. There is another way of doing it for problems that start at rest. There is a problem that he gives, uh, an equation that he gives on the previous page. So I can't turn pages here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so an equation that he gives, not there, there we go, on page 48, uh, which can also be used in problem page 48. He does it in the context of something falling from rest. And there are a couple key things there to use that equation. Number one, it has to start from rest to use that equation. And two, the way he presents it on 48 is the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. That's why I use the lowercase g there. But we can adapt that to other problems, such as problem 33, if we just change that g to an a. Just use the acceleration. If acceleration is constant and it starts from rest, we can use that equation. Again, we do have those restrictions on it. I've seen too many students use it for far places, for places that it should not be used. And it just, it's bloody, it's ugly. Uh, police are called, cats and dogs living together. You know, it, it becomes a nightmare. So we could, so the distance would be one half times the acceleration, which is five meters per second squared, times the time, which is three seconds. So one half times five times three squared also gets you the exact same spot. And there it is, that's basically two and a half times nine. So nine and nine is 18 plus 4.5, so 22.5. Hey, it's the same answer. And so that's it for the plug and chug, chapter three.